Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Xue Meng, and um, I started my PhD from last October at Open Geo Hub and the Wageningen University. Uh, uh, so yeah, just as, as Yulia, I just have a conceptual uh, idea of uh, my research. So I guess I can save a lot of time for us. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. About the title, spatial temporal modeling of soil health indicators. It's not hard to tell that uh, my research is uh, carried under the framework of AI for source uh, project. Uh, uh, what 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 was uh, present by Ish this afternoon, and uh, so what is soil health? Just as uh, Ish said, it's hard to really give it a definition, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I just put the uh, definition of U.S. Department of Agriculture here to give you an idea. Like they define it as the continued capacity of soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that sustains plants, animals, and humans. Uh, to me, this definition is still a bit uh, human-centered, but uh, yeah, as a human being, it's hard to avoid that. Uh, yeah. Just as the definition said, uh, it's still about how soil functions. So, uh, yeah, if a, a healthy soil can provide a lot of uh, crucial ecosystem service for the whole global, for the whole earth, like uh, they can provide uh, clean uh, water uh, for us and uh, crop uh, production, and uh, they can provide uh, habitat for a lot of uh, uh, biodiversity. Yeah, biomes, uh, which can uh, improve the resilience of the whole ecosystem to whatever like climate change and uh, any other disasters. Uh, so to 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 improve soil health or to restore soil health, you need to first have a method to quantify it. So there are a lot of uh, soil health indicators because soil, uh, soil is a, a living biological system. It's hard to de like quantified with just one indicator. There are a lot of them. And you can see there's a very nice uh, uh, picture. Uh, like the gray circle uh, shows uh, the number of indicators in that particular uh, class. And uh, their relation, they, are, they, they can be roughly classified into biological indicators, physical indicators, and chemical indicators. But it's not, uh, yeah, they can belong to several different classes at the same time, but uh, uh, their distance to each line, can, each side can show how uh, close they are to each class. And uh, uh, also, uh, they are related to certain uh, ecosystem services, uh, showing for different colors, biodiversity, climate, water quality, and plant production. And for me as a PhD, it's, hard. I, it's impossible for me to monitor and mapping them out. And uh, uh, the AI for Soil House uh, project, they define like eight in indicators. And uh, from those eight uh, soil, has, soil house indicators, I select like three of them, uh, which I'm interested in. And also they are related to our project, where I get my uh, fund from. Uh, there, these three indicators are so organic carbon, uh, which is key to a lot of soil functions. Like, uh, 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 and uh, it can improve uh, physical, chemical, and uh, uh, biological process going in the soil system. And uh, apart from that, uh, that supports it can it it can also serve as a major sink of carbon. As for the vegetation cover, I view it as above ground bio indicators. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's easy to understand that the plant soil relation is quite uh, close. Like the plant uh, provides food for the soil they, uh, through the photosynthesis, and they pro pro provide the f uh, physical protection and uh, they. The plant can also regulate the moisture and the temperature for the soil to provide more suitable environment for it. And also the soil give, uh, gives feedback to the plants by providing its, uh, 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 by providing uh, the plant with uh, nutrients as carbon uh, and water, all those things. And uh, uh, also the vegetation cover, uh, 
they have very mature uh, techniques to monitor and uh, plenty of data like uh, uh, there are, are a lot of uh, uh, Earth observation products about uh, vegetation like NDVI, FAPAR, EVI, all those things. Um, another soil health indicator I want to map is uh, soil microfauna uh, and I view it as a uh, below ground bell indicators. And the microfauna uh, means uh, the soil biomes uh, living underground in the soil uh, but larger than, uh, larger than two millimeters and uh, they actually play the role of regulating the interactions between different soil organisms. And uh, I, uh, the, another reason I chose this uh, uh, as indicator is that it is uh, rarely mapped before, so this idea makes me a bit excited. Um, so after mapping this three, uh, uh, the idea here is to map this three soil health indicators across uh, Europe and uh, from 2000 to 2020 at least, so there will be a data cube. Uh, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a spatial temporal uh, modeling. And uh, with this uh, soil house data cube, uh, we, can do at, uh, we, we can do some an analysis from there. Uh, the first thing I want to do is the trend analysis of uh, EU cells, uh, soil house dynamics to see whether the soil house of the Europe, Europe uh, is decreasing or uh, improving. And with this trend de derived from the previous uh, trend analysis, we can uh, analyze this trend as a factor of climate uh, land use and to identify the main drivers behind this trend. And with this trend, you can also project this change uh, of soil house into the future. Uh, so that's the idea of it. And uh, that's the general framework of uh, my current uh, plan for, the, for my PhD re research. And uh, I'll end my presentation with this picture. And uh, do you have any questions for me? Thank you very much. Uh, for, for the presentation. So it, it's also just starting, right? Your, your PhD, is yeah, it correct? Just okay, okay. Um, any, any questions from the audience? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. yeah, it's very interesting to see you want to map the soil macrofauna, right? Yeah. It is very exciting, I know, but it's also very challenging, I believe. Uh, uh, particularly where you get the data to, to do this mapping. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there are so many species and uh, how to decide uh, which to select. I think it, many factors there, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, in OpenGeo Hub, we have a lot of projects going on. And uh, uh, choosing so microfauna as an indicator is uh, the result of uh, like uh, balancing between different projects. Uh, uh, the fact is, we are involved uh, in another project uh, called Soil Microfauna. Uh, data sets, something like that. So there are another bunch of uh, soil biologists that they are collecting the soil microfauna data globally, and they want us to map uh, a soil microfauna uh, global map, basically. And they want to use, uh, make use of this uh, uh, opportunity to also contribute to this AI for soil house uh, uh, project. And uh, they are, I, can, I, I, I think, uh, there are 17, uh, in, uh, 17 soil microfauna uh, groups uh, are mapped, and they are mapped by like abundance and uh, biomass and uh, their distributions. So yeah, that's uh, the data set. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, I was about to say it's good that you are focusing on Europe, but you said okay, it will go global anyway. So uh, good, 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 good luck with that. Um,